Good day fellow viewers, this is The Traveller speaking. Welcome to my channel and thank you for spending a moment of your time to view this video. Dear viewers, have you ever had a favourite film or TV show that did not live up to its hype? An anime or manga perhaps that failed to realise its full potential? This video will be a first in what I hope will be my own series of videos where I take a look at stories from various mediums that did not reach its goal. A series I like to call Wasted Potential. For my very first video, I shall take a look at the show that dominated television for nearly 10 years, HBO's crown jewel, Game of Thrones. To paraphrase Robert Baratheon, Gods, the show was strong back then. I know this one video will be a drop in the bucket compared to the thousands of other videos on this matter, but my fascination with the rich, detailed story George Martin created has compelled me to say my piece on the matter all the same. With the hype for the show no longer being what it once was, and with the prequel series halfway done, I want to add my brief thoughts on not just the show as a whole, but the wasted potential of the series as well as what could've and should've been. For those who do not know, HBO's Game of Thrones is a medieval fantasy series helmed by showrunners David Benioff and D.B. Weiss and based on the book series A Song of Fire and Ice written by American author George R. R. Martin. What set these books apart from others in its genre is that in the midst of its fantasy elements like dragons, direwolves, whites and magic is the somewhat realistic depiction of medieval times. This is more so the case when you look up what it was that inspired Mr. Martin's works. I cannot recall when I first heard about the show, but I know that it was during the time when we still had the ever-redundant DSTV decoder playing a trailer for the show during one of its ads. I looked online for bits of info here and there, and lo and behold, the main character was played by none other than Sean Bean, whom I only know from his role as Boromir in Lord of the Rings. Based on that knowledge alone, I thought, why not? Waiting for the next season of Spartacus was torture enough and I needed another show to distract me anyway. Now waiting for each episode was very painful for me, more so when the plot became more intriguing after each episode. That's also not to mention trying one's hardest to avoid book spoilers. My relatives were pestering me for a new show to watch and me not knowing anything about Game of Thrones at the time, I told them in a nutshell that the show has drawn my interest personally. Whether they'd like it or not is another story. Now some of them didn't care for the medieval fantasy genre, but at my recommendation they eventually gave the show a chance. When season 1 ended, some were pestering me even harder for the next season. When season 2 ended, same story. With that bit of backstory out of the way, let me get into the basic premise of the show. The overall premise is about seven ruling families contending with one another through battles and political schemes and plots. Before I go any further into the plot and characters, I must first speak on the music and the visuals. The visuals is actually very good, even excellent at times given that HBO poured millions into the show on not just the settings, but also the costumes and locations. Now I'm no expert on these things. But around the time I started binging through many a TV show of similar genre, location and visual wise, Game of Thrones is among the best I've seen on that front. A special note I must make is the large scale battle scenes. You don't get many of these, but when they do happen, it's actually very impressive in my opinion. Seasons 2, 4 and 6 each had one epic battle scene and said scenes were well executed on a visual front. This is the stuff you normally see in big budget films, but for a TV show to do this is a serious game changer. Raman Javadi I'm already familiar with due to his prior work on shows like Prison Break and films like Clash of the Titans and Warcraft. Here however is one of his best works in my opinion. The title theme alone will be remembered for years to come. He has managed to give each family and house a distinct theme. I know that it wasn't until season 2 that the scope of his music got more varied and distinctive, because from season 2 onwards, each house and party, if not most of the main ones important to the plot, have their own theme. Certain characters even had their own distinctive theme. When you hear tracks like Winterfell, Goodbye Brother and King of the North, you know that it represents House Stark. Then there's the reigns of Castamere and the different variations on it. That would be House Lannister, obviously. When you hear Warrior of Light and Lord of Light, it represents those who worship the Lord of Light 
or Raul, uh, I don't know how you pronounce his name, Raul, uh, but anyway, that's what, as they refer to him in the books. These themes are also associated with House Baratheon, or more specifically, Stannis Baratheon. Speaking of distinctive character themes, King Slayer, although it only played a few times, is clearly Jamie Lannister's theme and among my personal favourites. I only wish it had more variations like the other themes. Another favourite of mine is Maester, a track one only hears a few times, but given that we only first year towards the end of season 6, I don't expect many variations on it at that point. Same with My Watch has ended, Jon Snow's own distinct theme and one he finally gets late into the series. On the whole, the music alone from start to finish is among the strongest aspects of this show. Now for the plot and characters. The first season or two gives focus to four out of the seven main families. During the course of the series, the remaining families get added to the story as they too have a role to play in the grand scheme of things. The early seasons focus more on the machinations of the feuding between the various houses, the Starks and Lannisters being the centre of what would become the War of the Five Kings as well as its aftermath. Some houses face ruin and extinction along with others looking to reclaim the prominence long since lost. All this takes place while a threat beyond the wall is gathering its strength, a threat that could end all of mankind. From the first season, the series was at least 80-90% to 90% faithful to the first book, A Game of Thrones. Seasons 2 onwards is where the changes, alterations and even omission of certain characters and storylines became more noticeable. Some for the better, others not so. Now the removal of key characters, story arcs and downplaying of magical elements of the series, while I understand that this was done to streamline the story, these changes are where the show would suffer down the line and most like myself wouldn't pick up on this until around season 5 as that is where for many the show's downhill slide began. The characters. Well, when I first started watching Game of Thrones and me having zero knowledge of the books or the show at the time, I was at first overwhelmed with a huge cast of characters. In order to make it easy on myself, I decided to learn who the main families were so that I can better keep up with who was who. From there on, I had less trouble following the main characters as it was clear that the first season had its core characters in the form of the main members of House Stark, Lannister, King Robert Baratheon, Daenerys Targaryen and her brother Viserys, and that's only because the last two's plot was isolated from the rest. As the story progressed, you get to see through the dialogue and characters' actions how they all tie in together. The characters themselves, great and small, are very engaging as is their respective plots, regardless of who you're rooting for, against, or wondering what the end game is. Now, no one in the world of Game of Thrones can be considered altruistically good or purely evil, and even the rare exceptions are given a plausible explanation as to why they are what they are. Great or small, each of them have a personal stake in the story, along with the actions they take, the decisions they make and the consequences that comes as a result. While each season builds on the last, it's at the height of seasons 3 and 4 where the show reached its peak in my honest opinion. Season 5 onwards is where the show starts to flounder. It's also the last season that a Song of Iron Ice author George Martin had any involvement in as the showrunners Benioff and Weiss were pretty much running the show now. What made matters worse was that they were running out of book material and yet decided to combine the plots of the last two books into a single season. Granted, people were divided on the last two books, but I still believe that certain plot lines in the books would have made for much better TV in place of what we got. This is especially so for the events in the North, Winterfell and the Riverlands. Something about the later seasons also bothered me in how certain storylines and characters were handled. Looking back, the signs were there for certain individuals, and given the showrunner's biases towards certain characters, it finally dawned on me what was happening. The once smart players in the Game of Thrones, whose wits and intellect were sharper than most blades, were reduced to incompetent, unsubtle buffoons to make certain characters look good. Case in point, Tyrion and Daenerys, Littlefinger and Sansa, and even Varys in the end. Even the actor for Varys was openly unhappy with how his character was written out, but I'm not done yet. 
Loyalties and allegiances apparently mean little now when a lord of a house can murder his own sworn king and fellow northerners at a wedding with zero reprisals against his house. The reason Roos Bolton was a step ahead of everyone was that he had measures in place that kept the wrath of the other northern houses at bay. Even still, that did not stop House Mandalay and the other houses from making covert moves against houses Bolton and Frey. A people who can applaud a queen like she's the saviour when not long ago the same queen blew up an entire sept and killed hundreds of her own citizens. That applaud from the crowds during a speech would have made more sense if her guards were poking them on or threatening them with steel or something. The ruins of the riverlands and the plight of the common people was a key point that was missing in the show. Brian and the Hound's respective journeys missed an opportunity to showcase the full devastation that the War of the Five Kings had on the small folk. Even the full context behind the siege of River Run was missing in the show, as well as House Frey being treated as pariahs from every family in Westeros due to the violation of guest rights. Not to mention the Brotherhood without banners and the exploits, which would have made for an entertaining story, in my honest opinion. Then we get to the omissions of important character moments and secrets that would have affected how future conflicts played out was a massive mistake on the showrunner's part. Case in point, Tyrion and Jaime. Leaving out the Taisha plot not only ruined Tyrion's character, but Jaime's as well. Had they adapted that part near the end of season 4, their last scene in season 8 together, if you disregard Jaime's quip about the innocents, would have been far more powerful had it been them reconciling after they parted on darker terms in season 4. Characters who are veterans and proven battle commanders and tacticians are written like imbeciles to make the villains more threatening than they are. I cannot think of a more fitting example here than Stannis Baratheon. On the show's own merits, and even when written out of character due to the showrunner's biases, he was still the best part of season 5 in my opinion, because the moment he died was when I completely checked out. There's many more, but due to time, I won't be picking out all of them. What made the Song of Fire and Ice stood out for me was that each character's actions, great or small, had consequences and how the aforementioned affected everything else. Not one character was immune from the consequences of their actions or mistakes. This was all before the writing became diluted to a mere generic fantasy show with fan favorites having plot armor and subverting expectations solely for the sake of being different. Gone was the fine attention to detail which is what helped distinguish the show. These flaws also became more apparent in Game of Thrones as far as season 5. Some, including myself, may argue even further back when compared against the well-written books of George Martin. I heard a rumor that HBO themselves were willing to renew Game of Thrones for up to 10 seasons, yet the showrunners wanted to end it at 8. I personally thought the show can run for 15 seasons, but I might be alone on that one. But hey, if Supernatural could do it, then nothing's impossible. Either way, if there's truth to this, then this is but one of several instances of a TV show with promising potential squandered by two showrunners who showed that they were way out of their depth. Now George Martin is not blameless on this as people are still waiting for him to finish the last two books. The way Benioff and Weiss made the last few seasons along with the reasons why plus the fact that they themselves admitted they didn't have a proper plan with the show, it's no wonder why people turned against them. While seasons 5 and 6 missed the mark, season 7 and 8 was a complete catastrophe. If they were growing tired of the show and wanted to do other things, they should have sought out another showrunner to take over, preferably one who is more familiar with the source material. Condensing and omitting character and plot arcs, again, I sincerely understand that it was done to save time, money and to better streamline the story as a whole. That being said, while this may have worked in the beginning, taken as a whole, this is what ultimately worked against it due to the lack of foresight. Certain arcs could not happen without key characters and the condensing and omission of other characters and arcs affected other characters and altered their motivation to the point of ruining them. Not to mention the missed opportunities to emphasize on key events and the impact that it had on all of Westeros. This is one of the areas where the show truly squandered its potential. 
Now I have a video on the Red Wedding itself that briefly touches on the impact it had in the story. This was among the biggest potential arcs they squandered. What's worse is that this is the main reason that Benioff and Weiss wanted to adapt A Song of Fire and Ice. In closing, if I were to go into every character, event and where they went wrong, this video would take overly forever, so I'm afraid I'll have to end it here. Now I may consider doing more videos on each character and family in the future as I find the world of Westeros and beyond to be very rich in lore. Either way, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching and until next time, safe travels dear viewers.